In this exercise, we study the relation between the Landauer Boutique and the Drude approach to transport. We start the discussion with an estimate for the number of modes occupied in a conductor of width W. And <coughs> for this, we will use an analogy or an approximation of the conductor by an infinite well of the same width, a problem which can be solved exactly. And you probably know that you find a ground state with a wavelength equal to twice the width. The first excited state um, has half the wavelength and so on. And based on, on, on this approximation, we write that the number of modes is twice the width divided by the wavelength of the highest occupied state, which is the Fermi wavelength. Now we can try to bring the formula for conductance of such a, condu a conductor within through this model in a form similar to the landauer boutique result. So we start by simply writing down the conductance, which is the aspect ratio of the conductor. So let's write L for the length times the conductivity, which is the familiar through the result. And at this point, in order to transform this expression so that this number of modes appear, we can use two relations. So first that the Fermi wave vector, which is 2 pi over the Fermi wavelength is given in a spin that generates to the system by the square root of 2 pi times the sheet density. So we have, uh, we will have a kf square appearing here. And another useful expression is that the mean tree path is Fermi wavelength times, uh, no, the Fermi velocity times the scattering time. And so we can absorb the scattering time and one of the two KFs, basically, in, in this macroscopic quantity. And uh, this Fermi velocity is h-bar times Fermi wave vector over effective mass. So if we um, substitute those relations in here, we will find e square over h times Fermi wave vector times elastic mean free path. And this form of um, the Druda conductivity is already useful by itself. It will be used in the second exercise in this sheet. And this result is already starting to look like the landauer boutique result with the conductance quantum appearing here. And um, in order to see the number of modes in here, we write kf as 2 pi over lambda f. And uh, now re rearranging the terms, we have the conductance quantum times 2 times width over lambda f. So this is the number of modes. There is a pi from kf then the elastic mean free path and the length of the conductor. 
And well, since this is the number of modes, what we have here is of the same form as the lambda vertical result. And we could naively identify this pi times elastic mean free path over length of the conductor with the transmission in the lambda vertical formula. But this would be wrong, as we see that this fraction here can be larger than 1 if, uh, say, the length of the conductor is sufficiently small. And we know that transmission is strictly s smaller than 1, and transmission larger than 1 has no physical meaning. And uh, to get the correct uh, correspondence to the concept of transmission within the lambda orbitical approach, we have to remember that within this lambda orbitical formula, if we write it in terms of resistance, so the result is now the inverse conductance quantum times 1 over number of modes times transmission. And this resistance here is the resistance of the system consisting of a quantum conductor and two contacts. And it comprises two contributions. There is a resistance due to dissipation in the contacts. Now the hole in one contact, an electron out of equilibrium electron in the other contact relaxing and dissipating energy, which is the resistance one has in the limit of perfect transmission, where there is no dissipation in the conductor itself. And well, since we have, if we remove this part from, from the full expression, what is left is a term h over e square times 1 over m times 1 minus transmission, which is reflection, over transmission. And this expression here is the pure resistance of the wire, the quantity which is described within Drude's theory, which has no concept of contacts. So the right identification that we have to do is that this expression transmi transmission over 1 minus transmission corresponds to this expression pi times elastic mean free path over length. And we can invert this for this for transmission and obtain a result transmission e equal to pi times elastic mean free path over length plus pi times elastic mean free path. So here we observe that a large diffusive incoherent system can be described by this landau orbitical formula if we identify transmission uh, with this expression combining a mean free path and the length of the conductor. But it is not clear how this corresponds to microscopic quantities and whether such a true de description will emerge from the landau orbitical formula in the limit of a large incoherent conductor. And to, to get a better understanding of this, we can consider such a large conductor which has a number of scattering centers and we consider small sections of it. Each section being now described with the landau orbitical approach has a transmission mm, T 
indexed with the number of, of the section that we are considered, which can be obtained with some quantum mechanical calculation, say. And <coughs> what we are interested in is what will be the transmission of the series of all sections until some section with transmission Tn um, in the case where transport or, or transport from section to, to section is incoherent. So what is the total transmission if um, the section are combined incoherently? And in, um, in the case where we are interested in an incoherent combination of all the sections, what we have to sum are probabilities for transmission events from one across all the sections and not the, tr uh, the probability amplitudes as in uh, the coherent case. So first we could try to describe a series of two sections. So in that case, this total transmission T will be, well, the probability of the event that we have transmission through the first section and transmission through the second one, or we have transmission, then reflection in the second section, then again reflection in the first, and finally transmission, and so on. We can reflect back and forth a few times. So the full expression will be transmission 1 times transmission 2, which appears in all of those terms, plus a series of powers of, the, of this product R1 times R2. So we consider all possible events. And well, this series can uh, has a closed form, so that the final result is t one times t two over one minus r one times r two is geometric series, and so r one is r is one minus t. <coughs> so. If um, we look for, well, so obviously transmissions are not additive, but with the help of this formula, we can check that the expressions one minus T over T, which have appeared here before, are additive. So that now if you consider this expression here, the pure resistance of those two sections of the wire, it will be given by the sum of those expression here for the two sections of the wire. And so in, in the limit of a large number of, um, of, of sections, the sum will converge to the number of sections times an average 
and this is basically uh, the statement of the law of large numbers so for for large n this this kind of uh, reflection over transmission term of the whole system will be the number of sections times a statistical average of those quantities that we can in understand in, in the microscopic picture. And so then, starting with the landauer Whitaker description of each of those microscopic sections, and with the assumption that we combine them incoherently, we arrive at a result where we can identify the mean transmission of the sections of the wire with a mean free path and then we recover the Drude formula. So it is in fact the classical limit of the Landauer-Bittiger description.